I told you guys when we introduced impulse that when you see in a question force and time in the same question, regardless of whether you're asked for impulse or not, when you see force and time in the same question, I want you to automatically think impulse. Force, time, think impulse. If you take a look at the back wall, there's an always list. Force and time at the top of it. Force and time, impulse. Now, you notice as well right below that it says force versus time graph. I always want you to think three words. And those three words are, repeat after me, area equals impulse. Area equals impulse. Whenever we see a force versus time graph, I want you to think area equals impulse. Why? Well, because the area of a force versus time graph will be impulse. Think those three words. Sometimes, to be honest, you're not actually asked to find the impulse. That's okay. I still want you to think those three words because whether you're asked to find impulse or not, you're going to have to find it. It just may be, it may be an end. It may be the answer to the question, or it may be just a step along the way to get to the answer for whatever you're asked. The area between the x-axis and a line on an f versus t graph represents impulse. So what do we mean by that? This is my force versus time graph. You can see force on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. By the way, what would our manipulated variable be in this graph? Manipulated variable always appears on which axis? Which is it? X-axis, yeah. So time would be our manipulated variable. Force would be our responding variable. This is our x-axis here, right here. This area right here and this area right here is what we're talking about. The area between the line and the x-axis. Now, you can see that one of those areas is above the x-axis. So this is going to be a positive area. It's a line above the x-axis. And this area down here is going to be a negative area below the x-axis. And that hopefully makes a little bit of sense to us, right? If we have a, a positive force, we should get a positive impulse. If we have a negative force below the x-axis, we should get a negative impulse. And we do. Now, sometimes that's where the question ends. Sometimes the question says, here's your graph. What's the impulse? Area equals impulse, done. Sometimes it asks you for impulse and something else. Or sometimes it doesn't even ask you for impulse. Regardless, you're going to solve for the impulse by finding the area. And then, if you need to do something else, like find maybe the change in velocity or the mass. After you've found the impulse, you're going to set the impulse, which is the area, equal to m times delta v. So if you've found the area, you've got this. If you've got the mass, you can find delta v. Or if you've got delta v, you can find the mass. There is one equation that I don't want you to ever use in this context of a, for, sorry, of a, of a force time graph. Ironically, I don't want you to use on a force time graph delta P is equal to force times time. Do not use this. Anybody know why? Technically, it's valid, actually. But I don't want you to use this. How come, Mason? Well, kind of. Yeah, kind of. That's not why I don't want you to use it, though. What's the force? Well, this F stands for the average force. But what's the average force in this, in this graph? I don't know. Like, it's changing all the time, right? If you don't know what the average force is, don't try using this equation. So, that's good news. It really is good news. 
because it limits what we can do. It means all the questions that we see have to be able to be solved by, you find, by saying area equals impulse and impulse is equal to m times delta v. We don't have to worry about doing anything else, just those two things. Sometimes just one of those things, but at worst, both of those things. Here's an example for you. Number one, it says, I don't care what it says, actually. First, I look at the graph and see, oh, that's a force versus time graph, right? If I see a force versus time graph, I should, before I even read the question, automatically think three words. What are they? Area equals impulse. Good. Area equals impulse. I might even want to write that down, because as I read the question, who knows if my mind starts getting scared or nervous with whatever it's asking, uh, and I might forget that standard area equals impulse thing. So, I don't know, maybe I do want to write that down so I don't forget it. Air equals impulse. Now let's read the question. 4,500 kilogram truck begins at rest, accelerates over time as illustrated by the graph. Determine the impulse experienced by the truck and what's the final speed of the truck. Now, uh, it begins at rest. Um, it doesn't always begin at rest. Make sure that you recognize whether it does or does not. That's going to make a difference. Not for the impulse, but for the final speed of the truck. You can imagine that if it begins at rest, the final speed will be different than if it begins at 5 meters per second. So it's important to know what the initial speed or what the initial velocity is. We know that uh, regardless of what else we're going to do, we know that we're going to start by saying area equals impulse here. Let's go to the graph. Let's actually, before we calculate the area equals impulse, let's actually look at our axes. We should always do this for any graph, not just this, but any graph we see. Look at your axes. What do you see on the x-axis? And the units are? Five. Seconds. seconds. Is that OK to have seconds on the x-axis? Yeah, it is. That's fine. What about on the y-axis? We have force, and the units are? Times 1,000 newtons. We want to make sure that we draw attention to that, right? If it's non-standard units, milliseconds times 1,000 unit or newtons, kilonewtons, millinewtons, whatever. If it's not just newtons or not just seconds, draw attention to that. You can imagine how easy, when we're finding the area of this thing, just to use the numbers on the y-axis, 0, 10, 20, rather than 0, 10,000, 20,000, which is what it really is. Okay, let's do our area equals impulse thing. To do that, because it's kind of an odd-shaped thing here, we've got to break it up into a triangle, a rectangle, a triangle, and then another triangle right here. Let's find the area of all four of these sections, and then let's add them up. We're going to say area 1, which is the area of this triangle, is 1 half base times height. Somebody this morning said base times height over 2. Same thing, right? Exactly the same thing. I don't care which form you use. The base of triangle 1 goes from 0 to 5, and the height is, uh, looks like 15. Is that right? 15? Good. 15,000. We shouldn't forget that it's 15,000 because I circled the times, times 1,000 in red. Hey, listen, a question like this, it's so easy to miss that. And if this is multiple choice, you know they're going to put the answer in there. One of the answers in there are, are going to um, reflect you missing the 1,000. We multiply those together, we get 37,500. And the units would be newton seconds because it's, it's uh, impulse. Area 2 is just base times height, or we could say it's length times width. It doesn't really matter. The base goes from 5 to 15, so it's going to be 10. The height goes from 0 to 15,000, which gives me 150,000 newton seconds. Area 3, it's a triangle again. We're going to say it's one half of the base goes from 15 to 20. And the height is, once again, 15,000. 37,500 again. And finally, the fourth one, the fourth one is also a triangle. The base is from 15, sorry, from 20 to 25. The base is, once again, 5. The height is what? The height is what? Negative 15,000 because it's going down, negative 15,000. We do that, it works out to be negative 37,500 seconds. Uh, sorry, uh, Newton seconds. 
So what's going on here is that in, in stage one, the momentum is increasing. It's increasing even more. Even though the force isn't increasing in stage two, the momentum is increasing even more. Even though the force is decreasing, the momentum is increasing. It's a positive impulse. But then when we reach the 22nd point, all of a sudden now the force is in the negative direction, and that's taking impulse away, taking momentum away. So it decreases. We add all those up. We get 187,500. Or let's just round it to a couple digits. 1.9 times 10 to the 5. There's my impulse. There's my impulse. There's the first part of the question. Now let's find the final speed. Final speed. There's only one more thing I can do. What am I not allowed to do here right now? What do I not want to try here? Right. Don't try F times T. Although it's technically valid, we don't know what the average force is here. And even if we did, it really wouldn't be helpful to us. So don't even bother trying. Let's go to our other equation that we know is valid. Delta V is equal to M times delta V. We already know the impulse, 187,500. Let's rearrange this. Solve for delta V. The impulse is 187,500 divided by the mass of 4,500. That gives me a change in velocity of 42 meters per second. Now, it's asking me for the final speed, not the change. But the initial is 0, right? If the initial is 0 and the change is 42, what's the final? 42, right? But you notice here, like, if it did not begin at rest, we'd have a bit of an issue there, right? We'd have to add that to the initial velocity if it didn't begin at rest. It's not crazy hard, is it? No? There's one question on worksheet number two that I'd like you to take a look at right now. It's question number nine. You've already done one to eight. I'll give you a few minutes right now at your desks to try question number nine on worksheet number two. All right, let's go over this now. Question number nine. The question says, what's the impulse experienced by the object, and what's the object's change in velocity? But you know what? It doesn't really matter what we're asked to find. When we see this graph, regardless of what the question says, regardless of what the question says, we should think automatically three words. Just like when we see a funny angle, we think, I don't like funny angles. Just like when we see force and time in the same question, we think, area, or sorry, we think uh, impulse. When we see a force versus time graph, we should automatically think three words. What are they? Area equals impulse. Automatically. Area equals impulse. We might even want to write that down. Let's take a look at our, our axes to see if there's anything kind of wacky going on there. This is seconds. This is newtons. Looks like we're OK with that. We don't have to convert anything. That's good. Saves us a little bit of bother. Uh, we're asked to find the impulse. We're also asked to find uh, the change in velocity. Let's just find the area right now, because we're always going to do that regardless of what we're asked to find. The area of this is 1 half base times height. The base is 0 to 10. The height is 4. When we do this, we end up getting 20 newton seconds. Now, how many people did this as one triangle, 1 half base times height? How many people broke it up into two separate triangles like this? You know, you can use 1 half base times height in a non-right angle triangle. Yes. You can only do sine is equal to opposite of hypotenuse, or cosine is equal to adjacent of hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. But to do the area equation, it doesn't make any difference what the angle is. Absolutely. Here, have a look at this. No, have, have a look. Have a look. Like, have a look at, we've done it this way. This is the way that I would do it. But if you did break it up, it should work, right? 
we'd make it two sections then. We'd say one half of base times height. The base there would be 6. And the height would be 4. So that would be, uh, what is that, 12? Uh, 4 times 6 is 24 times half. Oh, that's an 8. Yeah, you're right. That's an 8. Okay, so that would be 16. And then the second one would be 1 half of, what's the base for that one, from 8 to 10? Which is 2, and the height is 4, which is 4, which adds up to give me 20 newton seconds. So it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. But in the end, if you do it this way, that's fine. You get six hours to write this bloody diploma exam. If you spend a little bit of extra time breaking it up into two triangles instead of one, big deal. Now you only have five hours and 58 and a half minutes left to do the rest of the exam, which is about, which is about three hours too much. Shouldn't take you more than three hours to do this. 20 newton seconds. There's, there's the uh, answer to the first part of it. Now the second part of it, we're going to say uh, impulse is equal to what? Yeah. What you're not going to say is impulse is equal to F times T because the force is changing and we don't know what the average value is. So don't even go there. Let's rearrange this to solve for delta V. I get delta P over M. Delta P is 20 newton seconds. And M is, what is it, 4? That gives me 5.0 meters per second. So my change in velocity is 5. If we were looking for a final velocity uh, and it started at rest, VF would be 0. If we were looking for a final velocity and it started at, let's say, 2, then my final velocity would be 7, right? Because it increased by 5. Yep. Uh, it's given to, it's restricted, um, it is restricted by what's given to you on the axis of the graph, but we're not going to lose sleep over that. Um, in physics, neither in physics 20 nor in physics 30, are we going to even worry about significant figures for graphs. So I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Even if this, even if I gave you this on a written response question, and in fact, it's not going to be this graph, but you will see a graph on one of your written response tests. Um, I will not mark significant figures for that. So don't worry about it at all. And you, wouldn't have, you won't have to worry about it on a diploma exam either. Yep? Yep. Yep. Unless the numbers were expressed differently here. Um, now, the, the one exception to that is this. Those don't count, period. Zeros don't count as one or two or it's just like an infinite number of significant figures for that. So, but you'd look at your other numbers used.